Hey everybody, David Cross back with you again. I took a couple days off. At least it looked like I took a couple days off. I had been working on a few projects and doing some changeover of some node red functionality from my custom nodes to a, our platform in the cloud automation. But I had a program this morning that I had written up and I kind of took one of my ARP examples and extended it because it kind of builds on top of a project that I'm working on. And effectively what I wanted to do was uh, to be able to take an ARP and pretty much an ARP from anywhere, uh, tell it to run and look it up information against IP control, you know, looking up the IP address, finding that information, whether it's dynamic through DHCP or static, getting that host information and other details and pulling it back into the API uh, that I'm calling or consuming. So uh, just to give you a real quick view of what that looks like, uh, just so we can move on and uh, look at that, is you have uh, what we call get ARP table, which is a command I wrote, and then the IP address of my uh, node red. And I'm going to output this to grid view, uh, which is kind of cool that uh, node red provides or uh, PowerShell provides you in that you can uh, open this up in table view and do filtering and things like that. So what we have here and what I wanted to do is I wanted this to call an ARP, which is running remotely, but eventually I'm going to have this upload ARP data. And I wanted it to pull in the data, run the ARP, convert out the MAC and the IP, and then query IP control, which is VT Diamond IP, to get the IP address through their get device by IP address API. And I wanted to pull back the host name but, and the address type so I can see whether this was static or dynamic, or even if it was something that was not registered, but that there's an IP address assigned to it actually in the ARP, but it's not actually in the database. So there's some checks here and things that we'll probably end up extending. And that was in effect it. And here's how this looks on the command line. And you would think also with all of those MAC address uh, programs and videos I've done that I would look this up and tell you what type that is as well, but that will be the next step here. <laughs> All right. Um, so really what I've done is I've built two flows to do this. Now, the important part of the flow is this get IP. It is effectively what is calling the API in IP control requesting that get device by IP address. But it's being called from my ARP table API endpoint that I'm consuming through the client. So kind of an internal API. But it also serves as an external API and something that I could call if I wanted to go out and just simply get the address. So by passing that URL to it and telling it what the IP is, I can do a quick look up through this node red flow I have, simply bypassing anything else just as a kind of directory lookup function. You know, so return the results. And to really kind of build this out into what we were doing with this, um, I took an HTTP request node, input node, I set it up as a get, and I told it to uh, be the endpoint of ARP table. And then I have an execute mode node that I'm going to perform an ARP. Now this is Linux that I'm running on. And for different environments, you would probably have different commands and or arguments. ARP in it seems to be what I want on Linux here. I think that works on Windows as well, but check before you consume that. And then what I want with the output, which through this ARP is going to perform the ARP scan, and return a string. And the string is gonna be a whole bunch of new lines of ARP information, including the IP, the MAC, the interface, and what type of um, interface it is. So I don't need all of that, I just wanna do some simple things. So really what I wanna do first is I need to split that string into an array. And I'm gonna call that array called input. And then I wanna take and create an out array that we're gonna pass in the payload for the next step in the process. We then are gonna perform a loop through the input, telling it to do a for loop. And then I wanna go out and effectively do a couple of checks where I'm going to see if the line contains something that looks like an IP address. And that's all I wanna check. Um, if it doesn't, I'm gonna assume it's an empty line or that it didn't have the proper data because if it doesn't have an IP address, it's really no good to me. So might as well drop it at this point before we move on. But that will also match subnet mask and other things. So we need to probably correct that at some point. Now, the other components of this, I'm doing a lazy way of replacing in multiple calls, any spaces and double space or multiple spaces. And then I'm going to create an array that I'm going to split of that that are going to be space delimited. 
I know in that space delimited array that the first string is going to be an IP address. So in this next case here, we're setting D, variable D is props zero IP address, and we're splitting it on the dot. Now, why I'm doing this is because in the next step, I want to calculate the IP integer or decimal of this IP address. And you do that by multiplying by 256, the different octets, and adding those together in, uh, through a mod. And so you effectively have, at the end of this, a digital representation of the IP that can be sorted. And this sort isn't like a string sort, where uh, 192.168.1.1 and 1.10 would come before 1.2. So we want to make sure that this is sorted on the binary aspect of this IP address. And this is what that does, or we will use that for that purpose. I then want to make a match of the ARP, because I think it reports back incomplete as one message, but I'll clean this up eventually too. But you need to have some type of checks to make sure your MAC address is uh, some type of valid MAC if you're appending a device or appending something in the event it's not there, or your splits because of the spaces and the fields not there might also split that a little differently. So really take caution on this. Make sure you debug this accordingly for yours if you copy and, and kind of paste that. Now, what I'm also going to do then is I'm just going to push this into the out array, this object that I'm creating. But kind of key to this is, and I, you know, I had a hard time figuring out the best way to do this. The best way to do this is here. <laughs> it is to do it right now. And what I wanted to do is to then take the IP integer as I'm adding it to the array and run a sort method against that so that I can then sort the values on the binary so that it's probably returned to the client in that order. And I do the same thing. And I duplicated this again, lazy way of doing. But again, the concept is here's the if or, here's what I want to put in the pack, uh, response. And then here's the sort for each of these as we kind of move forward, which is nice to have that kind of sort function. Um, if you don't have an Excel, you should get that function as well. I'm going to put that out there at some point. So as we kind of go through this, then we're going to split out each of those uh, array elements because they're in a, a payload now of objects in a payload in an array and we're going to split that so that each message is going to be run individually. We're going to go ahead and change a few rules which are effectively establishing through this JSON expression editor the ability to go out and construct what our URL is through the returns or input addresses. So in this case the message.input.ip address is what I want appended to the string. So this helps me create that. And then I'm going to set a few others, like move the payload, which has some of the data about the input of the art, into a variable called input, set the URL, and then I want to set the headers to a flow variable called token headers that I created earlier. And I'm running this on a kind of a scheduled interval. And then lastly, what we're going to do is we have the call to the endpoint here, get IP, passing it this construct, get IP, IP address, and the IP. And then I want to check for the response. And the response is going to be a valid response by IP control standard. And the three that I'm checking on are if valid, if not found, and found. Now, if valid or invalid, excuse me, this is just simply setting up a return response that includes the MAC address since there was an ARP entry, but the IP may not be valid if it has this MAC indeed in, involved. The second part of this is the if not found. So if the device IP address was searched through IP control, but it returned no response, that it was not found, I want to pull that out, and I also want to collect the IP address, which in this particular instance, I'm going to build the IP address, this JSON structure, and I want to tell it to look into the fault string and to split this by space, and it happens to be the fifth element in that array, is the IP address of that not found string. So I'm taking that IP address and adding it to this so that I will then be able to, in the function, uh, go out and do the IP in and, and some other checks. And then for the found functionality, I'm setting up the address, the type, and all of the variables that get copied over because they were, in fact, uh, set, and we know that they were found in the database, right? 
So then when I have all of these results, I'm then going to join all of this information into an array, which I'm then going to clean up just some of the return message information. I'm going to delete the input headers, just clean it up. And then return that back to my response, which in the client's case is that object of those values that were in the response. So each one of those is basically looks like this, and there's 39 of them in the R. So we have, you know, effectively what we need in, in terms of looking this information up and, and providing that function. Now in the PowerShell command, uh, very simple, we were just basically consuming this endpoint, but because I'm using SSL, we had to go back through, or I did, and I told it to ignore the self-signed certificates, I set up a couple of the commandlet binding parameters, telling it mandatory was the IP address, but then setting a default or allowing it optionally uh, for the uh, API port that Node-RED operates on. Setting up my type, where I'm going to import some of the cryptography information using the .NET, and then I'm going to set up a type that's going to effectively ignore the self-signed certificate. Setting up the headers that are going to be passed, accepting application JSON, uh, the all protocols setting up for what protocols are supported, and also setting up the certificate policy to effectively trust this endpoint. So we got to get past all that. And because of that, I had to put this, or did put this into a script. URL is pretty straightforward. The endpoint is just our table. Uh, I'm not passing anything else in the endpoint. Again, I probably would do this if I were doing a remote collection or the ability to go out and pull different devices depending on where I was. So that might be something I would look at. And then wrap this in a try catch. And all I want here is just to invoke it, uh, assessing and spinning up our URL, the method get, our headers, application JSON, and the result is that we expect the ARP lookup. And so again, if I were running this on the command, I should get just a output that shows me the addresses, and you'll see that these are binary sorted on the IP address and that they're constructed, say, with the incomplete or where host names and stuff are found and not found. And so we kept some of that to kind of persist through the various messages. But and again, uh, what I want to get to at this point is later build this in to a kind of central collection agent that I can do discoveries, uh, on-demand pulling of information, or to have opt-in services where there might be a device on a network, a small, you know, even a Raspberry Pi, something very inexpensive that can report ARP and allow us to do some real-time collection of data to discover and compare to our IP control and report even statistics. And then also to create that second endpoint that I can then use just for simple queries. If anybody say, you know, I see this IP, I don't know what it is. Here's a quick way to, to query that through Node-RED uh, and or directly to the API into IP control. And it works very well uh, for that purpose, very quick. So I started off also kind of limiting this and found that, you know, I didn't really have any kind of throttling needs here. It was very quick to do this API. So I'm, I'm really just kind of throwing 50 messages at a, at a second. And uh, that seems to be pretty quick for the, the 40 or so that I have. And most of that time is just constructing the data, uh, formatting it, and, and then returning it. So that's, uh, that's where I'm at, and that's what I've done today. And again, I'm building this into bigger projects. I'm going to go ahead and add my Mac lookup. Uh, make some you know, things there that can identify the type. I also might want to look at, you know, maybe a, a Android application, you know, that calls this information possibly, uh, so I can look at this on my phone. And as I'm going around, you know, maybe upload through my phone uh, <laughs> that capability. That might be on the scope of this, but I might do uh, something like that later down the road. All right. So I don't know if uh, this is going in the direction some of you are looking at, but kind of in the projects it is for me. And at least from the IP network and security perspective, again, I can't emphasize this any more than if you don't know what's on your network, you just don't know. And it's good to have the tools available to you quickly and concisely to look up the data you need. And I'm evolving this so that I'm going to build in this, you know, kind of huge utility wrapper that I might just have as kind of an application that does all of these Mac functions that I can then use through my other applications I've read. So keep your eyes open, uh, keep your imagination flowing too, so that we can you know, move forward there. And if you have any suggestions or comments, let me know. All right, everybody, sorry I was late today. It took a little while to get through this and figure out the, the constructs. I think I've got it and can move forward.
All right. Take care and have a great day. And I'll talk to you either tomorrow or Saturday. All right. Cheers.